Hello everyone, my name is Nixon Das and I am working in DPCN as assistant professor. Today I am going to present a topic that is regarding nursing diagnosis and in nursing diagnosis I am going to present regarding the assessment. As we know, we can see in the image that a history collection has been going on. So it's really a very important part of the assessment that a nurse or a doctor communicates with the patient in order to collect the history which is a part of a pure assessment. So let us go ahead in the topic of nursing diagnosis and my ordered portion that is assessment. So assessment is a systematic and continuous collection, organization, validation and documentation of data as compared to what is the standard norm. It is a continuous process, obviously it is a continuous process means it starts from the patient's check-in and it completes till the patient gets healed and go back to the home. All phases of the nursing process depends on accurately complete collection of data. It is very much important to collect the accurate data and to collect the complete data. If you will miss any kind of data then it will uh, lead to lack of information and will not be able to get and collect the proper assessment. Next are the purposes of assessment. To establish a database, to require all the information that has been available from the client to collect all the information that has been required in order to uh, go through the condition of the patient that is called as a database. Nursing health history, physical assessment which includes head to toe assessment right along with that it is also you know we can have the uh, systemic examination is also been included in it. Physician's history and physical examination. We all know that history collection is a really very much important part of the uh, data collection and assessment. So physical examination can be also done through the head to toe assessment and systematic examination. Next is result of laboratory and diagnostic test. And final one, mind material from other health personnel. So these all are the purposes of the assessment. Next are the types of assessment. Initial assessment. It is done within specified time after admission to the hospital. Purpose is to establish a complete database for problem identification, reference and future comparison. For example, we can see that as the patient is admitted inside the hospital, we collect all the baseline data from the individual or if the individual is not been able to speak, we can collect the history from the relatives of the patient if they are available at that time. Next is problem focus assessment. It is an ongoing process integrated with the nursing care. Yes. Along with the initial assessment, problem focus assessment is also very much important. As the word says, it is an ongoing process. It means it starts from the patient, gets inside the hospital, right? And after the patient, let us say the patient is changing the ward from day one to day three, all the day, 24 hours, we need to we need to focus the problem. And the purpose is to determine the status of specific problem identified in an earlier assessment. Example, assessment of patient fluid intake and urinary output in an IC. Next is the emergency assessment. During any physiologic or a psychologic crisis of the client and purpose is to identify the threatening problem and to identify new or overlook problem. Example, rapid assessment of a person's ABC that is airway breathing and circulation during the cardiac arrest. Fourth one is time lapsed reassessment. Several months after the patient has came to the hospital, we go for such kind of assessment that is called as a time lapsed assessment. So after the many months or duration, if the patient has came to the hospital, we can go for the assessment that is called as a reassessment. Purpose is to compare the patient's current status to the baseline data. Like let us say, if the patient how uh, he was when he left the hospital and after three months, if he is visiting to the hospital, then which kind of changes, which kind of improvement is been seen, whether the condition has been healed properly or not, right? So such kind of things is been included in this time lapsed reassessment. Next are the steps of assessment. There are basically four steps, collect data, that is collection of data, organization of data, validation and documentation of data. First, collection of data, gathering of information about the client, which includes physical psychological, emotional, socio-cultural, spiritual factors that can affect the client's health status, which includes past health history of client that may be allergy, any kind of past surgery, chronic disease and etc. Various things can be included over here. 
Next is includes current present problems of client that is pain, nausea, sleeping pattern, religious practices, medication or treatment if the patient has undergone anything. Next is organization of data. It is important and much required to organize the data. Like see, we cannot collect the raw information and uh, without making it in a proper manner, uh, we cannot represent it because see, it is helping us to understand the problem of the patient as per the priority. In nursing, we knew that the priority is very much important. Even we formulate the nursing diagnosis as per the priority wise, right? So to organize the data uh, in a priority wise is very much important as it provides the exact accurate information regarding the health status, requirements and needs of the patient. Next is validation of data. The act of double checking or verifying data to confirm that it is accurate and complete. Validation of data is the process if confirming or verifying that the subjective and objective data collected are reliable and accurate. The steps of validation includes deciding whether the data require validation, determining ways to validate the data and identifying areas where data are missing. Failure to validate data may result in premature closure of the assessment or collection of inaccurate data. So validation of data is also again really very much important. After collection and organization of data, what we need to look out that the data which we have collected is accurate or not, is complete or not, right? We know that the collected data is in two forms. Either we collect it in form of subjective data, right? It means what the patient says and objective data, what we observe, right? So validation of data is also very much important that the data that you have collected is accurate or not, whether it is correct or incorrect. Documentation of data. Again, if you see, this is a very much important aspect as a part of, uh, you know, uh, at present, if you see, even in hospitals also, they recommend to go for a proper and exact documentation. Nowadays, if we see, documentation uh, has, you know, very much impact over anything. Like, if you see, if a doctor will come and if he wants to see or examine a patient's condition, then he will straightforwardly go and look out the documentation because everything is been noted inside. So nurse records all the data that is collected from the client's health status and which can be in a form of factual manner, not as interpreted by the nurse. Let us say, if I'm thinking that this is the condition of the patient, right? then after two days, this will be the condition of the patient, then it doesn't work out on our factual things. It means it doesn't work out on, you know, what I think about the patient. It works out on what exactly the condition of the patient is. So I need to document it. Record the subjective data in client's word, not in my own words or how I feel it or I what how I understood the condition. Restating in other words, what clients say might change its original. So that is all about the bibliography. Thank you very much for listening to me.